Hello YouTube, this is Gogster. This video is a question to, let me call it, non-heterosexual people and those who are standing for equal human rights, like I do. I don't want to speak here about the religious motivated gay-hating uh, meaning of marriage but of what I mean, what family is. Marriage, how I see it today, has changed. It's no more longer a relationship for the whole life, but a consenting partnership for a determinate life period. In the last 60 years, the equality of sex became a reality, more or less, it depends where you are living in the Western world. For sure, my view on this is a West European view. No longer a partner is financially dependent of the other, and that's the main reason why over 60% of the marriage are divorced after a more or less long period. I propose to ask a child from a divorced couple how this child may define family. I think it will have a larger view of what traditionally is called a family. Probably it will tell you about his two fathers and his two mothers, maybe about his father and uh, his father's new wife, or of his mother and the mother's new boyfriend or new husband, and why not about his three fathers or three mothers, maybe. So this child's definition of family is only one example of what today is a family, but therefore it's not less a family. I've been motivated to do this video after my humble contribution on the human rights video from John University. He listed a link where the country's uh, behave to gays is listed. I post the link again below. I'm quite proud of my country. It allows the same sex activity since the year 1795. It has the recognition of the same-sex relationship since 2004. The same-sex marriage is proposed. Single gay adoption not yet, but proposed is the stepchild adoption. Gays in the army has never been a problem. And it bans some anti-gay discrimination. And that's not bad for a 100% Catholic country. In Luxembourg, church and state are not separated. The priests are state employees. I have the right to quit the church with a letter, but I will not have any tax exemption therefore. From my tax money, priests will be paid, churches will be maintained and heated during the winter, and catechists and priests spend two hours a week of Catholic religion lessons in primary school to children from 6 to 12 years. Since 1945, so uh, 64 years, the country is ruled by the Christ Democrat People's Party with only one short break between 1975 and 1979 where the ruling party was the Liberal Democrat Party. I had to mention this to show that even in a Christian country freedom of sex can be granted. Maybe because our people do religion more like tradition than like faith. And Luxembourg is the richest country on earth. Sorry, Denmark, don't panic. So rich, or too rich, to care about the cost of the religion. Please believe me, to reach 
all that what we have in Luxembourg was not easy. At any time when a law which was in conflict with the Christian Catholic faith from the people's government has to pass the Chamber of the Deputies, the Vatican guided Catholic constitutional monarch, the Grand Duke of Luxembourg, refused to sign the law and brought the country to a constitutional conflict. The same thing has happened in Belgium. Our monarchs refused to sign the abortion law and recently the so-called euthanasia law. The solution in Belgium and Luxembourg was to declare that because of health problems the monarch could not rule during a given period of time and the law passed during this time. That's the problem with the head of state who is born into his job to represent the people. I had to explain this to come back on my main point, the gay marriage, and how it's handled here. One alternative is given to marriage, to marriage as such. In our law it's called Pax. The Pax is for everyone not only for the gay people. If two persons decide to live together, they can be paxed or married. Yes, also straight people can be paxed. What is the difference between marriage and pax? Well, I don't have to explain what is marriage, everyone knows it, but uh, so what the pax offers and what pax does not offer. The Pax is also a contract between two people who decide to live together. This contract can at any time be ended with a light divorce-like process. When you are Paxed, you have the right, like a next family member, to decide for your sick or even dying partner, which is really important. You have the right to share a family bank account and if you want to buy a house, you are treated like a family. What in my opinion is missing in this contract is that tax couple has not, at least for the moment, the same tax exemption with inheritance. The possibility to adopt a child for a tax couple is difficult and for a gay couple in the future only possible with a stepchild, the child of, of, uh, of the partner. And that's it. If today you ask a couple if they are married in Luxembourg, Belgium, France, I think also, or other uh, European countries, don't be astonished when the answer is no, we are paxed. <clears throat> My point is, why not leave the word marriage to the so family valued Christians. It's only a word which has no more the same signification than years before. Like you can see with my example from the, the child from a divorced couple. Well, I hope it was not very blasted now. Ah, no. Okay, unfortunately, I know only one lesbian paxed couple but many paxed male couples. Before making this video I spoke to them to know what are the meaning of the pax contract. They all agreed that's a very 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 nice fine thing. With only one exception from a fucking fighting atheist like myself. He wants the word marriage back and to quote him he would never accept the word marriage taken hostage by Christians. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you. Ciao.